All right. Good morning. Um, this was um, another one of my crazy inventions um, back when I was getting pretty heavy into drawing stuff and playing on Shapeways. Um, the kind of idea came about this from a guy that I was working with at the time. I was over at, um, at ATW Automation. Now, I don't remember the, the gentleman's name. I probably have his business card around here somewhere. But he's probably the closest thing I've ever met to, like, a mathematical genius. We would be sitting using calculators or using CAD trying to figure out some of the, the math that was going on when we were working on these um, leak and test seal uh, machines for transmissions. Actually, for... Um, at the time, it was the Chevy Volt, and uh, um, we had to go out to a plant, so I rode out with him to check it out and design some stuff for um, uh, like an optics machine that would check the, the differential shimming on Ford uh, transmission or uh, differential cases. So on the way out there, we talked about, you know, what I had done over the years and that, and... Uh, I told him about RC. Well, he wanted to see a car, so I brought him uh, an A-scale Nitro and a 12-scale car. And um, he was more interested in the 12-scale car, surprisingly. But one of the things he had talked about that he was really surprised, again, being a mathematics guy and big into frequencies, harmonics, all that kind of stuff, he wondered why our motors are always just mounted off the front face and everything just kind of bounces and moves around, you know, and if, if we worry that about that or have noticed that, never noticed it because none of us ever made anything that was tied into the other side. So that was kind of where I went with this and uh, started to draw this up so that, for one, I had a motor case that was tied in on both sides. Everything was symmetrical and balanced. Uh, bearings were in the exact same positions from center, again, so everything was balanced. Um, again, just trying to isolate everything. And then, of course, you know, I, I'm sure some of you guys have seen, like, the Speed Merchant rear pod that we made with the carbon tube and uh, the aluminum bulkheads. That was kind of also around the same time I was drawing this. Um, but, again, just trying to make everything as light as possible. So it was just a, a pretty fun thing that I never finished. So... Oops, wrong button. I want that one. So this morning I woke up and played with this a little bit. And so you can see this whole 3D printed housing has the stator uh, basically just slid right into it. You got your motor bearing at the front. Um, you got your timing, timing board, the little 3D printed... Uh, timing ring clamps that I made up on Shapeways a while ago, and of course, sensor board bearing, all that stuff. So, but this was one of the things that, uh, that I always thought would be fun to print and actually run on a track and see if we could actually notice any difference or if it's just, you know, you know, one more thing that didn't matter. So this entire thing would be one 3D printed piece and yes, I actually did spend a bunch of hours running CAE on this whole kind of swan neck here for the center shock. Um, it should theoretically be strong enough to, to make it, but again, I guess it depends what it's printed on. I wanted to use Shapeways' uh, SLS with the um, nylon and aluminum mix. So also we got a little bit of uh, heat dissipation from the motor. But you can see... Uh, um, Everything was kind of keyed in here, so these were stops to keep the stator from pushing in too far. These were stops um, that would key into the, the stator, the existing uh, bolt holes, so that way it wouldn't rotate and you know, keep, keep timing consistent. And then just bearings and, uh, you know, for our side dampener tubes on our, on our Griffin 12 at the time. So this was one of my fun projects that I wanted to finish and just never got around to doing, so... Figured I would throw this up on Shapeways if somebody wants to 
play with it, remaster it into something for another car or anything like that, feel free. And uh, if you do, please post some pics and share. And, uh, and let the rest of us know so we can check it out. Um, let's see. I have already... I've already loaded it up here to um, to GrabCAD uh, with the section view picture and just their usual 3D model here. So any of the CAD guys out there that want to laugh or, like I said, print one out and, you know, or modify it to make some current motor parts fit or whatever. But basically... Uh, switch back do that one too many clicks so again basically in the hubs you could shim this one is only slightly longer than like a standard IRS 12 scale hub and this one of course is just something I drew to make it look nice so that it wasn't a whole stack of shims in here but basically this this part this part this part are all 3d printed and I had actually ran some 3d printed end bells and stuff like that at IIC a long time ago and and they held up just fine so uh, shapeway stuff the, the SLS nylon and aluminum nylon is actually pretty strong I actually even ran a cambered right front wheel on my um, 10 scale oval car the year I won uh, mod uh, pro mod oval there at the birds with uh, with Danny Stockman's car so those couple parts I showed you and this one are all 3d printed and then this was just a sensor board off of an existing old Trinity motor at the time so pretty pretty basic really That's about it. I'm going to head off now and probably, I don't know, I'll see what the temperature is. I might go see Frank Ulbrich and, uh, and the guys drag racing here in a little bit and uh, see what that's all about. And I also forgot about this one. Uh, Hobby Bobby, Bobby Santoro is supposed to be there. And I might just bring the house jump buggy. Uh, hey, it's me, Alan Scott. And uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't know if you had seen, I think it was the third triple X main video. Uh, we decided to do a train jump. And the first train jump we attempted to do was with the house jump buggy, which was set up for very, very high top end. And it was not geared, and we forgot the tuning screwdriver, so it was dead rich. And needless to say, we missed the first jump, and it landed in the coal car and disappeared. Well, I, a couple weeks later, maybe a month later, I got a phone call. Bobby wanted to bring me back my A-scale car, so it's a pretty amazing story that that thing is still here and uh, and not melted down in a in a you know. And a blast furnace or something somewhere. So, uh, so we'll we'll meet up with him today and probably maybe uh, record some stuff about that and share that story because it's it's pretty comical. So, all right, guys, have a great day. Later. <laughs>